but I'm Matt Bernstein. I'm a practicing psychiatrist. I've been so for 25 years. Um, I trained at the University of Pennsylvania and at Harvard. Um, I've worked in some challenging clinical settings, including the inpatient schizophrenia and bipolar unit at McLean um, and some psychosocial rehabilitation programs with people with really severe mental illness. Um, and I've taught medical students and residents at Harvard. I guess I'm supposed to say that these are the views of myself, not of my institutions. Um, but I strongly stand by these views. Um, so I've done everything in our field that trained us to do. Medications, therapy, long-term psychosocial support. And yet, even with all that effort from me and, and especially from the people I'm working with, full recovery is extremely rare for the people that I work with. That changed four years ago when I discovered something that reshaped my understanding of mental illness, metabolic therapy, specifically the use of ketogenic diets and other interventions that target the brain's metabolism. We heard this morning um, from a young man who used the ketogenic diet to put his OCD completely into remission. This is the kind of thing that I'm seeing all the time. I'm seeing extraordinary things. So I'll tell you a story about someone who I saw recently. This is uh, Mary, who's 45. She has bipolar disorder, PTSD, a history of alcohol dependence and longstanding remission. Um, she's smart, she's funny. She actually worked very hard to become a therapist herself. And she's deeply connected to her AA community and her family. But despite all of this, she comes to me, she's on six different psychiatric medications. And this is very common in my field. And despite being on those medications, her symptoms continued. Mood instability, depressions, manias, anxieties, hospitalizations, things that are extremely disruptive. And she, of course, she had metabolic syndrome from the medications. She had been put on a GLP-1 medication about a year ago. She had lost some of the weight, but she confided in me that she was addicted to sugar. She was still eating essentially cookies and ice cream and not much else. Um, so we made a bold shift together. I put her on a therapeutic ketogenic diet um, with other metabolic interventions. And eight weeks later, she comes back to me and says, I've never felt this good in my entire life. And I am not manic. This is real. I finally feel in control of my health. That kind of transformation is no longer rare in my practice. I've seen patients with depression, bipolar disorder, even psychotic illnesses improve dramatically not by adding medications or therapies, but by addressing what was broken underneath, their metabolism. In my entire career, I haven't seen anything else that reduces symptoms, lowers medication use, and restores vitality in the way this does. It gives people their energy, it gives people clarity, and their hope back. It's the foundation they need to rebuild their lives. And that brings me to a difficult truth. My field of psychiatry has missed something really big. Since 1980, the American Psychiatric Association has used a diagnostic system that merely names symptoms and largely ignores any root cause for why those exist. And if we don't know why something is happening or why someone is suffering, how can we truly help them? But now we do know more. One of the biggest drivers of mental illness is actually metabolic dysfunction, just like in diabetes that we heard about before. Mental health conditions, depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, are all closely linked to these metabolic disorders like diabetes, obesity, and cardiovascular disease. These are not coincidences. They share common biological pathways. And we know what those pathways are. It's insulin resistance, it's mitochondrial dysfunction, oxidative stress, and inflammation. They all contribute to both metabolic and mental health disorders. And we already have a powerful intervention the ketogenic diet that targets these exact mechanisms. It's been used for over 100 years to treat epilepsy, over 300 years to treat obesity and diabetes, and now early research and clinical experience show that it can help people with psychiatric conditions too. We have some case series, we have pilot trials, and we actually have hundreds of anecdotal reports from people who have changed their lives. More rigorous trials are underway now. There are randomized controlled trials happening as we speak that will be published in the next couple of years. So what do we need now? We need funding to scale this research. We need more of it and sooner. We need training for clinicians, mental health clinicians, in metabolic medicine and in nutrition. We need coverage for metabolic screening tools and therapeutic nutrition. And we need policy that supports and not hinders these approaches. Because if metabolic dysfunction is a root cause, which I know that it is, 
then metabolic therapy must be part of the treatment and part of prevention. This is not fringe. This is not theoretical. It's evidence-based. It's clinically grounded. It's backed by what I've seen again and again. We are standing on the brink of a major breakthrough in psychiatry, one that doesn't just manage illness, but actually heals people from the inside out. And most importantly, it restores their dignity, their clarity, and their power. So let's stop settling for chronic. Let's stop su accepting suffering is inevitable if we treat the root cause. Because when we heal the brain's metabolism, we can actually help people get their lives back. Thank you.